Exercise one, we've got 53 data points, so that's telling me that uh, n is 53. Working with the t distribution, we're asked to figure out what degrees of freedom would you use. Uh, so the degrees of freedom we know are just n minus 1, so 52. And the second problem, we're working with the t distribution with 40 degrees of freedom, so maybe we can highlight that. Uh, and we're test, our test statistic is 5.87. Our p-value is, is uh, this right-hand tail. And we're told at the significance level, alpha equals uh, 0 0.05, would you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis based on this p-value? We don't, don't know what the null hypothesis is, but we know that this is the corresponding test statistic. And so we're asked to draw conclusions without using technology or a table and to explain. So. The idea is that uh, with 40 degrees of freedom, um, the T distribution becomes approximately like the standard normal distribution. Okay, that's the key observation. It's not perfect, but uh, it, it's close. And so the point is, if you are out uh, 5.87, draw a picture of it if you want. If you're way out here at 5.87, this is way out, you're going to have a really tiny tail, which is your p-value. We're going area to the right here, so it's going to be very tiny. And so the answer is that you should reject the null hypothesis based on the significance level. I don't know exactly what the value is, but I know that I would only have to go out maybe like two standard deviations, at most a little over two, to get within 0 0.05. Like two standard deviations would give me a tail of half of that. I'm at almost six, so it's going to be way smaller than needed at this significance level, and so you would want to reject the null hypothesis. All right, exercise uh, three, so we're asked to, uh, f it says, uh, find the 95% confidence interval for the mean, uh, and so we're told the critical value for the t-distribution with 15 degrees of freedom is this particular year critical value. And then we're told x-bar, and we're told s, and we're of course told n. And so we cannot, we can just write it down. And so uh, the formula goes, let's kind of recall the formula x-bar plus or minus t-star times sigma over square root of n. And so when you plug everything in, you're going to get uh, 13.4 plus or minus t star which is 2.13 times s which is 212 sample standard deviation divide by square root of 16 which is 4 and you should please clean this up to 13.4 plus or minus 1.129 I'm happy with that if you want to add and subtract of course you can let me write that down for you as well so you would say 13.4 minus 1.129, and you're going to get 12.271. Uh, uh, All the way out to 13.4 plus 1.129, you're going to get 14.529. Uh, you could also uh, hand this in as well. Either one of these are acceptable. The point is you can see this range from this notation. This is the range we can give. We can't say for sure what the true mean is, but we're 95% confident that it falls somewhere between those two values.